All right, back to work on these tribute essays. Some of the best writing you've ever produced, but you ha you're producing it for a purpose. You're paying respect and honoring somebody that's had a tremendous impact on your life. And what a cool thing to be able to use our skills to do. And this is also real life work. Yesterday in my short Wednesday video, I shared an excerpt um, of the speech I gave at my grandpa's funeral service this past winter and just the story of how he became the, the mascot of our girls cross country team because of his warmth, his energy of the joy. And they always had to run up to him and pat him for good luck before the race and where he always was, a one mile mark, two mile mark, cheer him on and, and his steady voice and what he would do. And um, the legacy of just support and enthusiasm and goodwill that he left in me and for my family. So really thinking about yesterday, we asked you in a Google form to really reflect your person, what character traits are you trying to showcase about who this person is in your piece? And then secondly, how are you going to do that with action, with description, with dialogue? And why does this story really, why is it important? Why is it meaningful to you? So today, rubric rundown, or sorry, our agenda rundown, we're going to start off with an example essay from a student writer. And then we're going to check out some writing tricks, just some cool techniques to elevate your work and make it a little bit more sophisticated. Then I'm going to shut up and just let you write. Okay. And then you'll turn it back on and then how to close. If you're like most of us, you don't want to just, you know, closing is, is a tough thing to do and to close in an eloquent way and a cool way to kind of leave that final impression for your reader. You don't want to just write the end in 90 point font. We know it's the end because there ain't no more words. All right. And then just looking at some sentence flow and see how your sentences flow so it can be eloquent and a really beautiful and, and great thing to read. We're hoping these are about complete tomorrow. We really want to do a revising and editing workshop. Okay, so let us turn to an example essay. If you put your screens down and, and look up here, that'd be phenomenal. This is a student writer and um, he's writing about, about his dad and turkey hunting and the experience that they had there. So here we go. I sat there waiting for my dad to saunter out of the bathroom. It was 3 a.m. and I was like a bleary-eyed college kid before final exams. I had just a wink of sleep, but I was buzzing with anticipation as my sleepy stupor wore off. It was toasty inside the house, but I knew I would be soon be chilled in the early April morning. There, he entered the kitchen. Yawning, he poured a fresh cup of coffee into his red mug. I sat in the booth of the kitchen, still putting on my coat and my hat. My toast sat on my plate, but I was not hungry. Today would be the first time ever I shot a turkey, and I knew it. I could see it on my dad's face that he was going out this early for me. He had on a North Face jacket, some creased old work boots, and he was sporting a three-day beard. Ready? He asked me. I just nodded my head. I couldn't wait. He handed me a tall cup filled to the brim with creamy hot chocolate. The smell made my mouth water. Zip! My black zipper charged toward the top of my coat like a great white shark in the ocean. We charged into the early morning. The woods were alive, it seemed. Every breath I took and released could be seen in the cold air. Leisurely, I climbed into the truck that was almost too tall for me, my little feet slipping behind me. It was a red and a little rusty on the bottom, not ours, of course. We'd been staying at somebody's house, but this morning, it was just me and my dad. We drove about 15 minutes until we reached a farm area. Almost running, my dad made it to the door and asked if we had permission to hunt there. I stared and I thought about what would happen if, if he said no. Could we still hunt? Could I ever shoot a turkey? My questions were answered before I had time to think of more. I saw my dad's loving hand calling me over. My, my smile seemed to light up my face. I was ready. We marched out into the woods where we settled into a spot overlooking the road and the fields beyond it. Here, he explained, look through the eyepiece, he said, as he lifted it to my face. My eyes strained to see through the dawn. It was, it was, by, five, it was by now 5 a.m., brighter than before at least. Nothing, I said. Keep trying. I've got to be around here somewhere, he whispered. I let out a slight chuckle. Setting the gun down ever so gently, I took a sip of my hot chocolate I'd been waiting for. The sweet liquid melted my tongue as it was still hot from earlier. We sat in silence for some time, waiting and waiting. The man we were staying with pulled up to the house as well. He stepped out and jogged to where we were. He joined us but said nothing except the high that managed to escape when he got there. We didn't talk much, which was fine because I was focused on one thing, shooting a turkey. The animals had woken up by now. It didn't, I didn't bother to turn around when I heard the stir of the leaves or the peck of a tree. The animals lived their lives, as did I. In the distance, faint gobbles echoed. My dad and I looked at each other and smiled. We waited till, till we were in eyesight, till the, were in eyesight on the farm next to us. I set the gun against my shoulder blade. I aimed, breathed, and fired. 
Shattering the silence, I was momentarily deafened, my head spinning with sensation. Dad clambered over to the spot where the turkey had been, and there it lay. My own turkey I'd shot for myself. He darted back to our spot, carrying my kill. The smell of gunpowder faintly floated on the breeze. Now it's time to clean it, he exclaimed. Despite the thought rolling around in my stomach making me sick, we headed back to the house, ready to prepare my animal for dinner. That day I learned a few things. One, my dad does everything so I can be happy. He didn't have to go out that early, but he wanted to teach me something we could enjoy together. Secondly, he taught me how to do something we sh could share, just he and I. His smile lights up the world and gives everyone a warm, fuzzy feeling when he's around. I want to be like him when I grow up, strong, independent, and affectionate. All right, so this piece, you know, not perfect. It's got, a, you know, a few errors in here, but it's just, it's a showcase of a, of a story that meant something to the writer. Shooting a turkey for the first time, so kind of like a little turning point in his life, and yet it was his dad who was sort of his mentor, her, his guide that made it possible. So sort of a lot of unspoken lessons that day in the silence waiting. You know, his dad, you know, maybe didn't want to be up, but he's yawning. He gets out there, gets a kid out there so he can have this opportunity. And then the dad's kind of like coaching and, and joy. Um, for this experience that he can have. So I want you to think about your own piece. What are you trying to showcase about your character, your person, whether it be your friend, your cousin, your dad, your mom? Um, and so I'm going to stop and I want to give you some, some time to reflect on that. And then we're going to go over to some writing tricks. So at this time, go ahead and pull up one, your own essay, and two, um, some writing tricks that document is shared all on the same topic. I'll pause, find your essay and writing tricks. Okay, these are just some neat little ways to add a little bit more voice and sophistication to your piece. We already know figurative language, like a simile, my heart hammered like a beating drum, or his smile as bright as a hundred watt bulb illuminating the dim room. Use some of that in there, it makes it fun. If you wanna use a metaphor, just call one thing another, do it. Her tears were a river of emotion. The new school's hallways were a maze of confusion, right? Um, you can exaggerate, the dreaded task was sure to kill me. Or grandpa's yard was 10 football fields long and 15 wide. Personified, the wicked wind screamed in my eardrums as I rake old Mr. White's yard. His eyes spoke of deep gratitude. So giving human qualities to something that's not alive. All right, a lot of show versus tell is important here. Sensory detail. What can you see? What can you hear? When the light seemed to shine from her eyes and an enormous grin spread across her face, I knew it had been worth it. Okay? So in the in the little turkey killing story, we've got, um, you know, just... How, how the person felt all bleary eyed, dad yawning, the rusty old truck, um, the, the warmth of the hot chocolate, the cold on the April morning, all those sensory details that they add richness to it. Okay. Now, new writing tricks. We did these with a risk essay and we're coming back to them. These are ones that we don't always use, but they add a little next level. Okay. Repetition. So you start the same way three times and it has a dramatic effect. He had a quicker glove. He had the team's respect and he had his eye on my starting position. It would be humiliating, it would be ridiculous, but it would be exactly what my grandma needed. So use some repetition if it fits somewhere in your piece. Magic three are using three different descriptive phrases that all speak to one big idea. So if you're nervous, right, shaking with fear, sweating with eagerness, pacing with anxiety, I was a bundle of nerves. Hyphenated modifier is, you'll see it, I had one of those, let's just get it over with looks on my face. Or he gave me one of those, I don't know how to thank you enough looks. So you put little hyphens in between that phrase. And it's kind of like a descriptive, um, an adjective phrase to describe how that person looks or what they're saying or what they're speaking to you with their eyes or their expression. Lastly is ballooning. You have like a noun and you throw an adjective in front, then a couple more adjectives, and then finally three. I fumbled, crashing to the slick ground, the slick Muddy ground, the slick, muddy, unforgiving ground. Okay? So these are the tricks. You've got ballooning, modifier, magic three, repetition, and then the good old tried and true using sensory detail and figurative language like a metaphor or a simile. I'm going to give you about 15, 20 minutes to write, and then we're going to close our, our hour out by looking at conclusions and then finally making sure our piece flows with some sentence fluency. So you should be working and focused just on your draft developing it. And then um, teachers at about 15, 20 minutes, you can um, throw me back on and we will look at conclusions and how to close. Okay, by now you should bring your story um, to its full fruition to the 
to the big applause ending, the final impact, a conclusion. So your story ends, right? You've killed the turkey or you, you finish water skiing with, with, your, with your buddies, whatever your story is. But now you want to have um, an ending, um, a reflection. Why did your piece matter? So to do this work, you really have to think inside yourself as the writer. What did your story really mean to you? What is it really about? Is your story about finding strength? Is your story about um, just a, a fun memory with family and bonding and joy is your story about taking a risk with your cousin. What is your story really about? Why did it matter? Maybe it was a great example of your grandma's generosity and this cool, great thing she did with you. Maybe it was something your dad taught you about hard work. Okay. Maybe it's something your friend taught you about loyalty. So what was the value of your experience? And you just come out and tell the readers that why it mattered in your closing. And that's going to give it a lot of heart, a lot of voice, not just, then we went home, the end. <clears throat> okay. Comment on what you learned. What did you realize? So you could end with some inner thoughts, some description, or a final action, right? You're putting your, your rifle away after shooting that turkey and you're thinking about what, what happened that day with dad. So let's look at what the, some of the students did for an example. Um, so this kid, he talks about, um, dad as he closes and, you know, that day I learned a couple of things. So he reflects on his learning. You know, my dad does a lot. He sacrifices so I can be happy. He didn't want to get up early, you know, take time off work, all of this, but he wanted something he and I could share some bonding, right? I want to be like him. I want to be strong. I want to be independent. I want to be affectionate and caring to my family. So reflect on what you learned, the value, what you got from this person. Why of all the story experiences did you choose this one and made a mark on your life? What was that mark? Yesterday we looked at one. Our laughs, our greatest moments are always the ones we share with loved ones. I've always thought I was lucky to have such a loving family, but now I've realized I have so much more than that. I have a person I've always wanted to be like, a person I look up to, and a person that changes my life with his humor and generosity for the best. So the value of your experience. Okay. So I'll put this slide up here and I'll give you a few moments to add a, a conclusion wherever you are. I think it's a good time to, to find a way to end. Um, and you can go back and if you need to still draft part of your story, you can, but here's how to end with something that matters and with some voice. I will pause. All right. And lastly, so you can access our agenda. You have these slides. We've been working really hard on sentence fluency this year. So you don't just start with he, he, she, I, I, just boring subject verb sentence construction. So we want to see some of this going on in your writing. There is a component for sentence fluency on the rubric. Participial phrase. Start off with an ing phrase. Burying my face in her neck, I let my tears spill onto her fur. So this writer was writing about um, the dog, an experience that really mattered. Start off with an adverb, L-Y, like reluctantly, I followed the assistant into the tiny consulting room at the vet's office. So joyfully, exuberantly, excitedly, um, wildly, energetically, it's an easy way to start instead of just starting with I or he. So look for a sentence in your piece that starts with I or he, kick it off with an L-Y or maybe an I-N-G phrase to start it off. Continuing the uh, bis, these are complex sentences. So you start with a dependent clause, but you can't leave us hanging comma, and then you write the full sentence. As I rubbed her velvety ears for the last time, comma, I reflected back on a scene from her puppyhood. Prepositional phrase in, over, under, inside, with, with a lump welling in my throat, I stared at the ceiling, wishing to be anywhere else. So we'd really love to see two or three of these different types of sentence constructions in your piece. Other ones we've learned, double adjective. So just describe your dad, you know, Lively and exuberant, comma, he, blah, blah, blah. Heartbroken and distraught, I drop to my knees in anguish. And lastly, if you have two short sentences, join them with a conjunction like and or but. I knew this dreaded moment would come, comma, but I just wish it didn't have to be today. Okay? So you have these slides. You can refer to them for different ways to open sentences. We'd love for you to have at least three. Okay? So your remaining work, can you write an effective conclusion that reflects on the value of your experience. Can you craft sentences that flow? Tomorrow we'll meet you back with your piece and it should be about finished. We're going to do some revising, some editing, and have some writer's chats. Good luck.